Okay, the problem we were going to talk about was um, design a cascaded system with IIP3, effective IIP3 0 dBm having multiple stages with total voltage gain of 1000. Uh, maximum gain per stage is restricted to 25. You have a choice of 4 stages, you have a choice and then uh, uh, they have IIP3 of 0 dBm, 3 dBm, 6 dBm and 10 dBm. You can choose appropriate gain for each stage and input and output stage are 50 ohm match. And later on I gave you clarification that input and output stage of everybody is matching with each other, right? Okay. Alright, so let me explain uh, what was the intent of the problem. First of all, uh, there are four stages, 0 dBm, this is IIP3, okay, and then 3 dBm, was it 6 dBm, huh? 6 dBm. And 10 degree. Okay. And you have to bin um, a gain of 1000. Okay. So obviously you cannot have gain of 1000 in the last stage. You can only have maximum gain is 25. So then you would put 25, gain of 25 here, right? Last guy. This one obviously we cannot use because if you use 0 dBm, then nothing is going to work, right? Basically, your um, Minimum everything is going to be worse than 0 dBm, so you cannot use that. And then, um, so you have gain of 25 here, and then now uh, again you will put gain of 25, right? And what is left? Gain of 1.6, right? The point was to teach you when you do noise figure, you want to put the gain up front, and when you do IIP3, the gain you put it at the back end as much as possible. So that was the point of, of this particular problem. And uh, so, if you do something like this, what is 25 in dB? Do you know? It's 28 dB. Okay. And then this is another 28 dB. And this is a 4 dB. So, total gain, how much did we want? 1000, which is equal to 60 dB. Is that clear? That's what we are trying to do. Now, if you look at this problem, it cannot be solved. The reason is, let us look at three stages. Okay. And you have um, this has 3 dBm IIP3. So, this IIP3 will show up in the contribution as 3 dBm. Does that make sense? Right. And IIP3 of this guy is 6 dBm. What will it? input IIP3 look like because at a, at a time assume that everything else is ideal. Okay. So, 6 dBm and there is gain of 4 dB in front of it, right. So, you subtract 4 dB out of it, then you will get 2 dBm. So, this is due to 1, this is due to 2, this is due to 3. So, 1 gives you 3 dBm, 2 gives you um, 2 dBm and what does the last guy do? This has 10 dBm and what is the gain in front of it? 28 plus 4 is 32. So, when you when you look at the IP3 from this side, right, you have to subtract 32 out of it. So, what do you get? Minus 22 dBm. So, there is no way you can make 0 dBm out of this. Okay. So, this was a mistake. Uh, we, we were trying to come up with uh, numerical problems for you to solve and this slipped through. Basically, what I, all I am doing and this is what I want you to learn when you are doing your designs, right? Uh, that is what I am trying to teach you here. All you have to do is you figure out each guy's IP3 and see how much gain is there in front of it, right? What is, when you have gain in front of the stage, what happens? The signal gets amplified by that much, right? So, the effective um, IIP3 is reduced by that gain when you look at it from this point. Is that part clear? That is what I am trying to teach you in this process. Is that clear? Okay. So, all you have to do is just like you know 30 seconds and you know that this is not possible. So, let me reword the problem to you right now and I want you to think about it. If, if you have to make it work, what constraint would you change in the problem to make it work? Because then I can use it next year. So, let us go over last time what did we do quickly. So, last time we just went through basics of the mixer, right? So, 
I'm just kind of going through all this so that you remember. Okay, there was a very good question. Who asked me that question? And I, I said that I'll postpone the answer. Um, you asked me that question. Um, signal adds uh, six. Good, good. What is your name again? Shivram Krishna. I know you are an experienced guy. I know. So let me answer. However, you should have answered that question yourself. So let me explain the. Uh, I'm going to explain that first because it's important. Um, so we talked about this DSB business, SSB business, and I think I think you all familiar with that, right? And then we talked about linearity, how that is done. We talked about spurs. I'm kind of flashing this in front of you so that you remember what we did last time because I'm sure all of you have studied this matter in last two days, right? No. Okay. And then we went through FM radio example. Uh, we talked about isolation. RF, LO, LO, IF isolation. We talked about LO leak, LO leaking through um, the RF port from to the RF port, two port mixer equation. Okay, where you do you have a nonlinearity, square nonlinearity, and then we saw we saw how the mixing products are uh, are achieved. And then we went through one example where um, you have RF plus LO, uh, and we we just square. So what was the problem with this one? If you remember. Which isolation? Very good. Okay, because LO is sitting right in series with uh, uh, with RF, right? So, and then we did the next one where we injected LO at the uh, at our source, and then RF is going at the gate, and then we calculated some equations, basically GM, and then compared that to the bipolar. Basically, the the point there was is the conversion gain is GM by two. And so VLO divided by VD sat. So here, smaller the VD sat, then what will you do? You will get higher gain. Okay. And bipolar devices, VD instead of VD sat, you get VT, which is KT over Q, which is 26 millivolts. So then, as a result, also GM is higher, and this number is higher, so you get much higher gain, conversion gain. And then we looked at multiplier base mixture. So we just looked at one diff pair, and the current. In the bottom is IB plus IRF cos uh, omega RFT, and then we did this. Um, um, basically, uh, this sine of cos omega LOT that is equivalent to four of uh, four pi cos omega LOT, right? Okay. And then we just looked at the the relevant term, which is uh, um, LO minus RF and LO plus RF, right? So that is two over pi. Now, one thing I want you to remember here, okay? So when you do this, okay, uh, this is called a single uh, single balance mixer, okay, just one diff pair. So one thing you you want to I want to highlight one more time so that you remember is is this IB term, okay. If if you have this IB term, which is this right here, then you will have a cos omega LO times IB in your equation. Now IB is pretty large because it's bias term, right? So in reality, as this LO is switching like this, right, the the constant current source on the bottom is going squirting from one side to another side, half and half, half and half, right. So you have this bias current which is going between the two sides. You know, it's pulsing on on the on the two sides. And if you look at the output, you are going to see this completely. So the dominating term is omega LO, and that's your feed through, straight coming through to you. Okay. So single balance mixer, that is the problem. That you have a you have a straight away LO term coming at the output. So if you remember our equations, of course, when I did the equations, I only took the relevant term to make a point about um, uh, RF minus LO or RF plus LO, those kind of terms, right? But uh, when you look at this, right? When you multiply them, the omega LO term is is right there in the middle. Okay, and this becomes problem when you do up conversion example. So you have really large LO term, um, and since it's close to your um, LO minus RF and LO plus RF, then uh, it will be hard to filter out that. Okay. So single balance mixers are almost never used. I mean, I shouldn't even say almost. They're never used for up conversion mixers. Is that point clear? Because it comes along with a really high feed through. Okay. All right. However. When you look at the down conversion, yeah, you can use that. The reason for that is that omega LO is at at high frequency, 
and your IF is at low frequency, so you could put some cap, some inductor, whatever business at the output to filter the term out, okay, and you can get reasonable attenuation of your LO term, okay. So far, everybody is with me. So this is review of what we did in the in the last class. So last class, I stopped right here because there was an important point I wanted to make. So the same thing I was talking to you about is. Um, So this is a single balance mixer, and the point I was trying to make is um, even in the in the case of uh, down conversion mixer, right? You will have your desired term will be somewhere here, and then you'll have your LO term, omega LO, and this will be minus omega RF. And then you'll have uh, hello and some more. I mean, you can keep going like that. So we can obviously filter out as much as possible. However, I mean, this term is still large because you're you're taking the whole DC current. And uh, you know it's squishing back and forth. So, so the what we said here was I'm kind of reiterating what we did last time. GC the conversion gain was two over pi, and GM times RL. This is your RF path gain. So isolation from LO to IF is a problem. This is the problem. So, why does this happen? Right? You have, as I said again, you are squashing the, the, the DC bias current back and forth. So, there is some way we could devise so that this does not happen. Right? Then we can get rid of the this uh, very strong LO term. And uh, as I said again, if you have LO term, even in the, in, in the down conversion mixer, you have a lot of gain because you are receiving a very weak signal right and this LO term will basically rail out your rest of the stages. So, um, you can you are generating a re, uh, generating an artifact and then you are doing things to fix patching it up using a low pass filter. So, instead of that why why not come up with a solution which does not generate it at all right that is that should be our goal. So, that is the reason I am taking these baby steps. So, you understand you know this is the way it works, but this is the problem. Now, how do we solve this problem? So, how do we solve this problem? So, you can do the exact same thing one more time. So, this was IB plus IRF okay and then this was our VLO plus VLO minus and I am just drawing it differently here I am going to say this is VLO minus and this is VLO plus okay and then what I can do is instead of plus RF, I am going to do minus RF, IV minus IRF ok. So, it is like um, if you apply a differential voltage then you will get differential current right. So, on the left side we have plus IRF, on the right side we have minus IRF, it is easy to generate this right. So, now how do you, you can, you can um, in the previous solution, what we were doing was we were letting this flow through two resistors, right? RL 
and RL and the current was uh, I1, I2, right. So, when I1 was, when LO plus is positive, right, then only one transistor is on, the other transistor is off, ok. So, there is no current flowing through this guy and the positive current is flowing in this side, right. So, then I could take this guy and its negative current, I can make it flow through the right side, ok. Is, is that part clear? Ok, let me go over this again plus and minus. So, whenever VLO plus is high, then what is going on? The IRF plus, the positive term is flowing through the left side, right. But on the right side, there is no current flowing, right. So, then the IRF plus is flowing through, through this side. Um, I, I think you know what I am saying. Plus IRF current is flowing through this side. So, then if I am going to sense the output here between these two, then I can take minus IRF current and make it flow through the right side, ok. That is the way to kind of attack the problem, one way to attack it. So, then how do we connect them together? So, when, when this is positive, you know this part is on and when this is positive, this part is on, right. So, then I can I can say that this connects to this side. Is that making sense? When VLO plus positive is on, then this side will have plus IRF and this side will have minus IRF. Make sense? If I did it this way. And both sides are carrying IV right now. In the previous example, we were IV was on off, on off in each side, ok. So, obviously, naturally what I am going to do is then I am going to connect this side like this. Does that make sense? So, this is called double balance mixer, ok. Is this part clear to everyone? Kind of important point I am trying to make here. Yes, no? Ok, good. So, now let us do some uh, calculations here. Let us call this I1 and I2 and let us call this I3 and I4. And then this part is clear. So, I1 minus I2 is equal to IB plus I1 minus I2, I am looking at it and that is I, this term basically uh, the current in the bottom uh, tran bottom transistor that is a GM transistor and then multiplying that by SLOT. What is SLOT? It is a switching function. If you remember, we did that last time, right. And then on the other side, we have I4 minus I3 is equal to IB minus Is this clear? I mean, exact same formula I am applying over there, ok. So, when you look at differential output current, what is that equal to? The way we have drawn it, it is I1 plus I3, right, minus I2 plus I4. Is this part clear? I am just summing the current because I am looking at the differential current between these two. So, I1 plus I3 and then I2 plus I4, clear? Ok, alright. So, I1 minus I2, I am just collecting the terms and then I am saying plus Okay. I'm just rearranging the terms. So 
So, you can look at this and look at this from these previous two expression, right. And you can see that the, the IB will get cancelled out and then you can because this is equal to negative of this, maybe I should write it down so it is easy. SLOT minus okay. Key point is this minus sign because I three minus I four, and then obviously this will go away. And what will you get? You'll get two times I R F. Switching SLOT is the switching function. Okay, so you can already see now we did not do any approximations here. The IB part is gone. So in your output you will not see a low term, even when you look at the spectrum. Okay, and this SLOT is what? It's a square wave. At omega hello. And the fundamental component is is equal to four divided by pi. Okay. Okay, so I just rearranged all the terms to get you. So, what is this? 4 divided by pi IRF. We use our standard trigonometry technique omega RF minus omega LOT plus. Okay, so no omega LO term. So um, we have good LO to IF isolation. It's good. So of course, all this stuff works only when what's the condition for this to work? Uh, um, what is about what about tail current source? Good. So I think you are hitting the right point. So the point he is trying to make is that things have to match. Okay. So these two need to match. These devices need to match. These devices need to match. These devices need to match. So all these matching concerns are there. If they don't match very well, then you will start seeing a difference term between the two and that will show up right at omega LO and that will be your feed through. However, you can achieve pretty good matching with layout. I mean, um, it is probably um, devices is important for cancellation. So, you can you should be able to get 0.1 percent to maybe 0.2 percent type of mismatches. Matching is possible if you do pretty good job at you know uh, making sure the the devices are right next to each other and interdigitated amongst each other. Okay, so let's go over the conversion gain again. What is conversion gain? GC is equal to. Hmm? Somebody tell me. Four by pi. 
आई आर एफ टाइम्स आर एल बिकॉज यूल हैव आर एल ऑन द टॉप राइट ओके एंड डिवाइड बाय वॉट इज द इनपुट इट विल बी टू टाइम्स वी आर एफ राइट बिकॉज यू आर अप्लाइंग डिफरेंशियल वोल्टेज टू क्रिएट डिफरेंशियल करंट आई आर एफ प्लस एंड आई आर एफ माइनस राइट सो दैट इज इक्वल टू टू डिवाइड बाय पाए एंड देन यू हैव आई आर एफ डिवाइड बाय वी आर एफ दिस टर्म टाइम्स आर एल एंड वॉट इज दिस टर्म इट्स जी एम राइट जी एम ऑफ द ट्रांसकंडक्टर बॉटम ट्रांजिस्टर सो लेट्स ड्रॉ द कंप्लीट सर्किट ना हाउ दिस लुक्स लाइक सो दैट यू हैव अ फील या दैट आई एम नॉट शोइंग राइट नाउ बेसिकली यूल हैव अ लार्ज येलो ड्राइव दैट यू नीड टू अप्लाई प्लस एंड माइनस या वी गो थ्रू ऑल दैट स्टार्ट आई एम जस्ट स्टार्टिंग द टॉपिक दैट टॉपिक या वी गो गो थ्रू I wanted to show you the complete schematic, so you have appreciation. And then I'm going to, since I'm drawing it right in front of you, you can appreciate everything. So what is this bottom part? This is your IV current flowing, and you're mirroring IV here, two times IV. Okay, it's just a current mirror. Now this is the diff pair, where you're applying. Um, VRF plus. On the other side, I would apply VRF minus, and then I would have a resistor here. I would have a resistor here, and these are our D DC biasing resistor. Is that part clear? The bottom piece. Hmm. Okay. Let's call them M one and M two. so at steady state you will have ib ib flowing through them these are this is okay and this is our vlo plus vlo minus okay and sorry this is also plus this is vlo minus okay and now we are going to connect Like this, cross them like this, and RL and CL. What is the function of CL? It will filter out all the higher order harmonics, okay? Because you will create the plus term also, right? So, times RL. And what is the GM for M one and M two? So as I said again, uh, you have to for LO to IF isolation, you have to match M1 with M2. Then you have to match M3 with M4. M5 you have to match with M6. any doubt so far okay maybe i can stop and answer your question uh, shivaram krishnan right uh, he asked an really important question last week um, and i didn't want to answer that at that time because there a whole bunch of stuff we wanted to get through uh, in that lecture and the question was very straight forward the question was um, uh, if you remember the the dsb and ssb right 
uh, when we look at the uh, SSB noise figure, right? You have this is your LO, okay, and your signal desired signal is only on one side of the LO, okay. So let's say it's here, and then you have noise present here, and then we said that oh, by the way, there is going to be noise present on this side also, and when we go down convert this signal, what will happen? You will get the same thing. And you'll have twice the noise, right? One this way and one that way. Okay. So you have twice the noise uh, that's adding up. Um, so uh, whereas in in the this is the SSB case and DSB case, what we said is, hey, in uh, in DSB case, what happens is you have um, LO is right in the middle. Okay, and then. Um, so we said that you know you have this, and now you have only uh, you know one. This is not what you asked me, right? What was your question? You said that the signal adds. Okay, the question was, hey, signal is correlated, right? So it adds as voltage. Makes sense, right? But noise is uncorrelated, so it will add as power. So then, right there, you will get yet another 3 dB. So he was greedy; he wanted not 3 dB improvement, but 6 dB improvement. If that's what I remember, was that your? That's what you were indicating, right? So the the trouble with that argument is the following, and um, I wanted to answer it in such a way that uh, it becomes clear to you, because the question logically it seems like yes, makes sense, right? You are absolutely right. So what happens is, if you remember, if what we are trying to do is this. I wanted to come up with an answer which will be convincing. So, you have a mixer and you have this LO and you have your RF term, right. So, in the um, when you look at the let us say the RF signal looks like this, okay. Now, when I um, mix it with LO, I think now you will see the problem, right? Which is right in the middle. What will you see? Down converted over here. You remember this? We did this in one of the previous classes. You, you take each term and then first of all you take this and uh, these two and then you take this and these two, right? Differences. So you will see when you take this term, you will see like this, correct? And then you will see at two omega LO, you will see. Okay, makes sense. And then when you multiply with these, you will see do you see make sense so if you look at the signal band in the, in this case you cannot really add the two powers or i mean in voltage is that part clear no it's not like they are correlated and lining on top of each other when you do this mixing especially for the dsb case so the way you have to look at it is that each guy has noise on the bottom Okay, and you maintain certain signal to noise ratio with it, right? So that's the reason you need two mixers, and you maintain um, the I and Q separately, along with its noise uh, in the chain. And then, you, if you remember, um, uh, if we went through this uh, discussion earlier, where um, if you just look at the signal to noise ratio at each um, uh, in, a, in a direct conversion in just I path or Q path, you are actually under, um, uh, you are actually um, overestimating your noise figure because what will happen is the signal processing at the back end will give you further improvement because it will process the two separately and then you will, you will get, um, you know, the signal part adds up and noise part uh, in both the cases will, uh, will be taken care of. Okay, so that's the answer. Is that convincing enough argument that why signals don't add up just like that? Voltages. 
because they really do not look like uh, you know uh, they are flipped on top of each other. So, you cannot really add them um, assuming that they are adding on top of each other. No, but if you do not if you have a symmetric spectra right then you are you are not bandwidth efficient right. Then you are requiring me, requiring me to create a spectrum. Uh, this spectrum example is just just to show you uh, you know you will have actually information at every point right this point. What you are saying is that I am only transmitting half the information is that part clear. To gain advantage the way you are talking you will have to create a spectrum in which this and this have same information, this and this have same information, this and this have same information and then I can create this symmetric spectrum. When you do that you lost half your bandwidth because you try to create a symmetric spectra. This is this spectra is just combination of whole bunch of uh, you know tones like a OFDM or something like that right and um, you you have this whole spectrum at certain place and then you are trying to down convert it to for processing. So, you you cannot force it to be symmetric is that clear ok all right. So, I think I should Ram Krishnan I answered your question very good question uh, it made me think about how to answer the question. So, that was the point I was trying to make ok. So, let us go back to our uh, mixer business uh, in detail. So, there are two types of mixer uh, maybe three type you can say uh, first is active mixer. So, one thing I want you to um, to understand right um, and I have been thinking about this quite a lot as I am going through this course right. There is infinite amount of material available on the web in the books, but unfortunately all of it we cannot cover in the class. So, whatever we are doing in the class I am trying to give you fundamentals and I am trying to give you some key topologies. So, that once you feel comfortable with those topologies you should be able to read up and pick up anything new quickly ok. So, we cannot cover every possible topology in the mixer, but uh, this is supposed to be like real basics that we are going to cover. Uh, if you open up Razavi, if you know open up uh, Thomas Lee's book right which is kind of where I am um, I am picking up from and various papers and some other people who have taught me I am picking up from their uh, their notes also. So, I am trying to pick things um, which which you can relate to quickly and um, it is like magnets you know you you latch on to certain things and then they they create a hook in your head about learning about linearity, learning about noise all those things, but then at the end you have to put in lot of effort if you are going to be playing in this field and you have to practice. So, there will be lots of topologies to improve linearity, there will be lots of topologies to improve mixer uh, 1 over f noise, but my job here is to explain you how to look at all these things separately and go through maybe 2, 3 few cases. Because if you if you open up Razavi or if you open up Lee mixer topic I mean you can totally get lost. Unfortunately, we cannot cover each and every piece here, but we are only going to cover uh, some highlights and some basics from those things ok, but the onus is also on you to go back to it and read um, you know on your own. So, many times I will give you page numbers for each topology you know. So, if something is not 100 percent clear go back and read and then come back to me with questions ok. So, active mixers generally have three components. When I kind of like to draw it this way. So, the first one is obviously your you have RF voltage going in and you have V to I conversion. And you convert it to I RF here. And then we have the switching business. So, that is done by VLO. and what is on the top. So, this I R F will flow through that sorry I I F and then we have a load resistance. So, there you have I to V functionality and that is where you get your voltage I F ok. This is kind of the structure you will see um, if you look at all the active mixers you will have a G M lock on the bottom you will have switching uh, LO transistors ok in the middle and then 
so the, the current is being switched back and forth through the, the load resistor and then then you create the VF. VF. So, so when you look at passive mixers, all you are doing is the following, you have voltage applied here VRF and all you are doing is you are switching the voltage using yellow switches to the output to key, key create VIF. So, termination and filtering is provided at the output. We are going to look at each one of these for example topologies and kind of dive just like we did in the LNA case we did we will do a few example cases for each one of them ok. And the last one is again it is current driven. passive mixers. So, here what you have is you have current and that is going through a switch box again that is done by VLO and then you go through I 2 V conversion. to get you VR. So, this could be coming from the LNA. So, this is kind of interesting because if you remember in early part of lectures we were talking about matching right. There was 50 ohm matching at the output of uh, output input and output of the LO, but once you are on chip you can do whatever you want. So, for example, in this case you can have a current output of the LO and that you can switch. Uh, using these yellow switches and then uh, put them through a I to V converter to a resistor at the output and then you can get your output ok. So, in at the output of the LNA there is no 50 ohm matching and it is perfectly fine as long as you get what you want in terms of Q ok. But uh, typically when you buy components the the LNA the mixer off the shelf right then they are designed with 50 ohm matching for for making sure that they work with each other ok. Uh, so, you 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 have to make sure that you take a discrete LNA component, you take a discrete mixer component, then they have to talk to each other. So, then that is why they have to match. But then if you are designing a chip, then only thing that works with outside world is the input of the LNA ok, which is connected to the antenna or uh, or maybe a coax cable or something like that ok. So, that is where you have to worry about the 50 ohm matching, but once you are inside the chip you can play all the games uh, to your advantage. So, let us talk about now passive double balance mixer. So, as I said pre previously you have um, all you are doing is you have a voltage RF voltage and all I am doing is I am looking at that voltage um, I am switching on and off ok in terms of observing the voltage through LO switches ok. Now, this is possible in CMOS because you get perfect switches in CMOS ok. Uh, in bipolar cases you you had to worry about lots of things like base current and uh, some of the junctions being turned on and all that good stuff, but here none of that is uh, you know applicable. You can have a perfect switch which will just as long as your LO voltage is high enough then uh, that switch will not contribute um, in terms of signal integrity from from RF input to the IF output ok. So, the example pretty much um, I think you have seen this before and I am going to show you to look at it a little bit differently. And it is almost like a rectifier. For the sake of discussion, let us say these are all NMOSs. So, my observation points are here. 
So, I can put a load impedance here if I want and this would be your V O P and this is your V O N. Okay, so let's say when LO is positive, LO is positive. What will happen? Uh, this transistor will be on. This transistor will be on. Okay, the RF P will be connected to the this side, and um, RF N will be connected to the negative side. Okay, so you have this working and this working. And when the LO is um, LO is flipped, then these two transistors these will turn on. And then what will happen? The RF P will go to the negative terminal, and RF N will go to the positive terminal. Is that clear? I mean standard rectifier uh, circuit that we look at right. So, I am just drawing it a little bit funny way, but we can and I am doing it intentionally for to make a point. So, if you look at the, the circuit, it will look like this. This is your RL. And this part is your uh, RFP. Okay. Now, you have to convince yourself that these two circuits are identical. Okay. The only way to do that is in when VLOP is positive, VRFT is connected to VOP and same is here through, through this switch, right. And V um, and ag again, you know, uh, the VRFN is connected to the negative terminal and the flip if this is, uh, this is also true. Are you with me so far? Okay. Now, if you unfortunately I cannot just turn this around, right? But look at it from this side, right? This just looks like a standard Gilbert mixer, except that I don't have those those current sources on the bottom. Is that is that part clear? So you know you just have to look at it differently and comes out to the same topology. So in the previous case, we had current which we were chopping, the active mixer that we talked about. Okay, and here what what we are doing? We are only chopping the voltage, so we are looking at the voltage output, and we're just switching it back and forth uh, between the two sides. And this RL is providing just the termination for this RF output. So let's let's look at an example. So if you have a sine wave here, and if you have a sine wave like this, right? So what would you see at the output? So you would see as the as the LO is being switched back and forth. So I'm just going to draw here. something like this. If you have a sine wave and that is being chopped, this is what you will see at the output and similarly on this side you will see the negative of it. Is that part clear? What I am drawing here and when you look at the difference between the two, you will see basically a large term like this. something like this. So, that sine wave is being chopped uh, at the output and you will see the difference between it. So, this will be your VOP minus VON. Okay. I am not drawing it to scale, but just trying to make a point. Visually, how would you see it? Okay. No, we have not filtered out anything yet. So, we are just we are just seeing the, the output as is, right. Yeah, it will have, it will have. I have not filtered out anything yet, right. So, once you filter out these, all these other higher frequency components will go away. But yeah, good point. 
So we will, I mean, you kind of say uh, this is your question is a segue to what I am doing next, right? So what you have here is uh, you have a mixer and you have VRF and you have a VIF. And this is your SLO. However, here what is going on here is the following it is minus 1 and plus 1, okay, that is what is going on in your switching function and VRF is given by ARF, RFT. So, what is the IF output is going to be ARF cos of omega <coughs> RFT times what? 4 divided by pi cos of omega L O T. So, what is the output of that is 2 divided by pi A R F and 2 terms cos of R F plus omega L O T and cos of omega R F minus omega L. So, precisely leads to what his question was. This has both the low frequency term as well as high frequency term. So, it has both up conversion as well as the down conversion series. So, we would filter out this piece right here and then you would get this this term. So, the conversion gain G C is equal to 2 divided by pi is approximately minus 4 dB. So, this is with a square wave alone. So, do you see that? Um, so, here again you know we are just taking the voltage and we are switching the voltage using the alone. There is no current going through it and then we are chopping, we are converting to a voltage at the output. The RL functionality is just to provide impedance. Okay. So, you can see that since there is no bias current nothing. Uh, this is a passive mixer, the gain is obviously less than 1, okay, which is what we talked about long time ago. And I think somebody had asked in between a question saying that how come in this particular active mixer, so there we had not considered the load resistance if you remember. So, as soon as you put the load resistance in active, then you will have GM RL that will be your gain and then you can tweak GM and RL so that you get greater than 0 dB gain. So, um, there is one more uh, subtlety here. Um, unfortunately, I do not want to you know uh, I cannot go through the details of this in the class, but I just want you to know about this is uh, if you do sinusoidal allow, then the conversion gain is surprisingly higher is pi by 4 which is approximately 2.1 dB. Okay. Now, you would think that that is kind of counterintuitive right because if you would think that you want perfect switching. Uh, and you will get the best gain, but um, the impedance you know looking through the IF port um, is also important how it looks like and for the details of why this is there is a proof that is in the Lee book if you want and the Lee is page number 430, you can look that up, ok. It is a little bit involved. Even in the book, it does not uh, kind of completely give you the answer, uh, but what you need to know is that with the sinusoidal LO, you will actually get a better gain, okay, conversion gain in this case. So, now let us talk about the next, uh, there are two things we are going to cover one is mixer linearity and mixer noise. Noise being the favorite one, I am going to keep it there, okay. So, let us talk about mixer linearity first. So far, everybody is with me. Any doubts? So, the first thing that uh, if you remember that thing we did, right, this is the model of the mixer. So, this part was the GM, nonlinearity, right, because we convert RF voltage to RF current and then we are switching it in the even the previous examples. So, then uh, your IP3 is bounded by. by your transconductor. 
So, what is the transconductor? If you remember what I showed you in the previous example, right, is this bottom guy, the GM stage. So, this will this, this will be the ultimate limit of what you can best you can get because if this is low, then you cannot improve upon it further, okay. So, basically the way to look at it is you have I out which will be equal to your DC current plus you will have GM1 times VRF plus you will have GM2 VRF square plus you have GM3 VRF cube those kind of things right. So, these are all the derivatives uh, of GM um, you know higher order derivatives. So, uh, so then you know if you if you if you look at this right basically input transistor so there is an input transistor direct trade off between nonlinearity and noise let me explain you what that is. So, for nonlinearity, improving nonlinearity, if you remember we went through this before, improve IP3, you know you have to improve your VGS minus VT. If you want to improve your IP3, you need to improve your VDSAT, right. And I think we went through that a few, uh, was not there one question in the exam also about this. But if you look at the noise, what is that noise? 4 kT gamma over gm right. So, what is that equal to 4 kT gamma and gm is vgs minus vt divided by 2 times id. So, from noise point of view you want to reduce the vgs minus vt right. So, it is kind of there you have to trade off between linearity and noise all the time. So, that is about that. The second point it is a subtle point, but something that you want to keep in mind is you can get really over excited and you say that when you are designing and you say that I want perfect LO switching right. So, I will increase my LO amplitude as high as possible, but you if you if you plot mixer linearity versus LO amplitude are you with me so far? What I am doing is um, I am increasing the amplitude of the LO higher, 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 higher right and you would think that by increasing the amplitude of the LO I am going to improve my nonlinearity, right and I will explain what happens next. You have excessive you uh, if you have excessive LO drive you should avoid, you should only keep LO uh, as much as you need for perfect switching. Perfect switching means uh, your your current is completely switched one way or the other in the shortest possible time, but after that you should not drive it further. The reason for that is uh, really simple and you will see it during simulations. So, this is your uh, C parasitic, this is your RF you are applying and this is your tail current. Now, what happens is I am just going to show you an example you have I p and you have I n ok. So, this is my L o p and L o n ok. So, the L o is switching like this and this guy is going up like this ok. So, this transistor is on and this transistor is off when LO is high ok. Now, what happens is what is this capacitance and what is this capacitance? This is C G S 1 and this is C G S 2 ok. So, C G S 1 is 2 thirds C ox W L because this transistor is on ok. What is C G S 2? It is C ox times W and L overlap 
So, this is pretty small on this side because this transistor is off right, the channel has not formed on this side. So, CGS 1 is not equal to CGS 2 and in also CGS 1 dominates. So, if you look at the currents, um, you have I P 1, oh sorry I P plus I C G S 1 ok. These are the two currents flowing through this ok plus your I N 1, I N plus I C G S 2 that is equal to I T. Is that part clear? All I am doing is I am Kirchhoff's current law at this node. So, this current, this current, this current and this current they are equal to I T. So, of course, I n is equal to 0 right. So, your I p is equal to I t minus I c g s 1 plus I c g s 2 ok. Now, in comparison to this you can ignore this right. C g s 1 is dominating and C g s 2 is small right. So, then your equation becomes equal to I t minus C g s 1 and this is d v l o p minus v x divided by d t, v x being this place ok. So, what does that relate to? What is this? This is equal to the slope of the LO. Is that part clear? Because how fast your your shutting of that transistor. Okay. So the faster this, uh, faster or larger the LO is. Okay. Let's say you have a larger LO, then this jump is higher, and if you have faster turn on or turn off, then this DT is smaller. Okay. So this is the current. Okay, which is actually going through your uh, IP to the output ok. Is that part clear? So, the point I am trying to make is that also if you if you notice at this point if you see the waveform you will see this at twice the LO frequency because one guy will dump and the other other side will dump in the next cycle. So, you will see uh, this is two times omega LO term you will see over there. And this is going to the output. So, these pulses are going to the output ok. So, the sharper the sharper these spikes are uh, these current spikes are straight away going to the output and they will show and this will deteriorate your nonlinearity ok. Also other way to look at it is um, um, so, you could you could say that hey you know why do not I make this CGS smaller. So, I can make this device smaller you can make all these devices smaller right, but then what will happen if you do that then um, if you look at the impedance looking up to this node right. You you create you have this RF current I uh, which is flowing through this device and it has two paths one is to go to the output where it is desired and other one is to go to the parasitic capacitance. So, if you increase the impedance uh, by reducing the W by L of these devices then lot of current will go to the parasitic capacitance. So, what does that what parameter does it affect? Absolutely, conversion gain will suffer. So, there is a trade off right there. So, uh, the point I am trying to make is that it is a delicate balance you have to perform in your designing. So, do not overdo your LO, uh, you know, amplitude and slew rate, uh, that is the point I am trying to make. So, typically, when you are designing, what you should do is you should you can you can analyze this in a step by step fashion. Uh, you can start increasing the LO amplitude and after a while you will see that it will saturate and it things will degrade further in terms of linearity. So, you should stop right there, do not increase your LO amplitude too much. So, you should look at all the uh, all the performance parameters like conversion gain um, and also the twist to the story is uh, we are going to go through it in uh, later on uh, from the noise point of view this is exactly opposite as usual right when you try to optimize linearity the noise gets worse and that is exactly what happens ok. So, to summary of this is LO edges you make them sharper and you get higher or if you get higher amplitude 
then linearity will suffer. Thing will stop right here because uh, uh, it's a good clean point where I can stop and then uh, I can start covering this from next time. So next time, what we'll do is uh, uh, we're going to go to through various linearity improvement techniques uh, for mixer design. Okay. All right. Thank you.